Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining the Hazel Group's webinar today to update you on the company following the release of their recent CDP update. On the call today, we are joined by Glenn Corey, Managing Director, and others from the executive team. They will be discussing the recent developments as well as give you more uh, information on the company outlook. We did receive a number of pre-submitted questions, which will be answered at the end of the presentation. If you would like to ask a question today, please use the written Q&A facility at the bottom of your screen at any time during this webinar. The company will endeavor to answer all the questions in the permitted time. Any questions that are not answered during the webinar will be followed up where possible. Some questions that have been repeated uh, have been consolidated. Uh, so you may not hear your specific question asked, but it should be answered through the course of the webinar. I'll now hand over to Glenn to begin. Thanks, Krista. Good day, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar, and thanks for joining the call. As Krista said, I'm accompanied by two members of our leadership team, uh, Mark Edwards, our Chief Operating Officer, and Tim Forbes, our Chief Technology Officer. This is the first webcast that we've done of 2024, um, and given all of our recent news, in particular our CDP update um, this, this week, our CDP being online, um, our capital raise, our recent and arena announcement as of, um, again, yesterday, we felt it was a pretty good opportunity to, to provide an update on the progress corporately as well as strategically. Um, 2024 is shaping up to be a very transformational year for Hazer. The technology is proven again, um, and we're off to a very strong start operationally, and we're really looking forward to building on this momentum throughout the year. The agenda there it's in front of you, um, there's four key areas that we want to focus on today. The, of course, the CDP or the commercial demonstration plan and all the announcements that we've released around this. And, and of course, the important significance of the milestone this week or around the test program. And Mark and Tim will talk to that shortly. Uh, secondly, the progress that we're making on our commercial growth projects uh, and as well as our pipeline uh, behind that. Thirdly, our capital raise. Uh, and our share purchase plan, which is open at the moment, you should have received uh, those details either in the mail or electronically. Um, and then very keen, as Krista said, to, to jump into Q&A. Um, but before that, I'd like to reiterate our strategic priorities for the calendar year 2024. I want to recap on strategy. Uh, those who follow us, uh, we've worked hard over on strategy for the last 18 months, and we've got three key pillars to the strategy. It's commercialize the technology, it's scale it up, and it's monetize and, and grow it. Our commercialization strategy is on track. Uh, underpinning our business is our technology and bringing our CDP online and executing the test program over the course of the coming months is, a, is really a key enabler. Uh, and places us in a very strong position to leverage the technology into not just our current partnerships, our future and prospective partnerships in all of the target markets that we talk about. And you've often heard me talk about the North America, Asia, Europe as our key markets. I would probably add the Middle East um, to that as well. It's got ideal market characteristics um, and we're having a variety of discussions across all of these regions with prospective customers of the technology. So very comfortable where we are with strategy. On the CDP, I'll hand over to Mark and Tim very shortly. Uh, before I do that, you will have seen our announcement on the 31st of January this year. Uh, we announced the startup of our commercial demonstration plant. It's been work in progress for three years. It's an absolute landmark achievement for the technology and the company. Uh, and it really sort of sets us up for success on our strategy over the course of, of the coming years. It's the fifth successful scale up the technology and the fundamentals now of the technology are proven five times and they're very robust. This is the world's first commercial demonstration of low cost, clean hydrogen and graphite produced from a methane or natural gas or biogas or LNG feedstock using iron ore as a catalyst. And we're now focused on driving towards extended and continuous operation of the plant in 2024. 
that's probably a good time uh, to hand over to Mark and uh, Tim to give a bit more details on, on the uh, CDP and, and the results from the test program thus far. Yeah, thanks, Glenn. Uh, yeah, I think most of you will be familiar with the CDP and it is uh, a key part of our technology development strategy and, and being one of our most important projects over the last few years. So we're all certainly excited to finish the commissioning of the, the hot operations phase at the end of last year. Um, the CDP's nom nominal capacity, it's about 100 tonnes per annum of fuel cell grade hydrogen and 400 tonnes per annum of uh, hazer graphite. And that's a meaningful size to prove the technology and obtain the, the data needed for validating the commercial plant scale up designs that we have on the drawing board. And this project's been really well received by our collaboration partner, uh, Water Corporation, and the local community uh, business. Um, and by processing uh, biogas from the water treatment plant, it makes it carbon negative, which is one of the key features is why we got uh, ARENA funding. And it's a distinctive advantage of our technology. Um, as mentioned, we made that first hydrogen and graphite in January, and that was within about three hours of startup. I feel it's testament to making good use of the time over the last year to operate the plant to test and debug equipment while we we're waiting for those last uh, hot equipment items. So we're now executing the test program step by step and expect to continue uh, this over the first half of the year. Um, those initial test runs have been very positive, um, but we will continue to be cautious and methodical in understanding the data and the learnings and adjust the plant and optimise as we go. Uh, Tim Forbes, our CTO, will elaborate on some of the results uh, shortly. And again, I'd like to acknowledge ARENA for the valuable contribution to this project. It was one of the largest uh, granted funds for such a project at the time, uh, which uh, shows the continued strong government support that we have. So I'll hand over to Tim and he can go over a, a summary of some of the initial CDP learnings. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Uh, before I start, I might briefly introduce myself uh, as it's probably the first time a few of you have seen me. Uh, my name's Tim Forbes, uh, CTO here at Hazer. Been on board for about 10 months now. Uh, prior to working at Hazer, uh, most of my career was with ExxonMobil in oil refining. Uh, there I did a range of technical roles from operations support, uh, research and development, uh, operations management, capital projects. Uh, areas that I probably focused more in were around uh, catalytic cracking of fluid bed process, so directly relevant to Azure experience and also technology deployment. So one of my uh, more recent roles at Exxon was uh, delivering technology for a multi-billion dollar refinery expansion in Singapore, so very relevant to Hazer. Now, in terms of uh, early results for the CDP test plan, we, we'd, we'd love to talk all day and, and give you all of the details, but there are, um, couple of factors to consider. One, technically and commercially sensitive information. Need to be careful how we manage that. And, and that's as much about protecting the company and your investment. Um, and then also note that some of this information is preliminary. So we want, to, we want to give you insights, but also be careful to draw conclusions before we've completed analysis. So with that, um, Early, early information, we've, we've already achieved uh, 36 hours of hot biogas operation. That's versus our prior best of 24 hours. We're really off to a good start. In the initial runs as well, our conversion, methane conversion and graphite production is in line with, with expectations. So we haven't fully optimised performance, but at this stage we're confident in the, in the technology being able to uh, deliver the required performance that, that we have built into our larger scale commercial projects. A couple other, other factors, heat up and pressure up and start up were largely uneventful. And you know we've been talking a fair bit about material, materials integrity over the last couple of years. I think we're reaping the dividends of that hard work and there's, there's nothing to report on materials integrity at this point. We do have some uh, minor ancillary equipment that's currently out of service. So there's a, a recycled blower in the control scheme that allows an increase in, in feed rate. So we're currently fixing that to 
help set us up for an extended duration run. We've also got some minor instrumentation controls, tuning, procedure optimization work that we're getting in place to give us a, a good chance of getting an extended duration run in line with the test program schedule for the next for the next run. So at this point, no, no major technology concerns. We're off to a good start and we're looking to execute the test plan uh, as, as we've planned. Uh, Glenn, can you flick to the next slide, please? Yep, bear with me here. How's that? Thanks, Glenn. Yep, so in terms of, well, a, a few of you have asked, what is the plan? What, what would success be? And so we're really centering the, the plan around three, three pillars. One, produce hydrogen and, and graphite, um, just dem demonstrate the technology. So I've already delivered on first hydrogen and graphite production. Next component of that will be to deliver larger volumes of graphite material that we require for product qualification. So at this stage, we've, we've done a lot of uh, bench scale preliminary uh, proof of principle work on our graphite product. And we're at, we're at the phase where some potential customers are asking for volumes in the, in the hundreds of kilograms to complete the next phase of product testing. So getting, getting those volumes together wasn't possible with a pilot plant. That's one of the key enablers of, of this scale. And that, that's next on the cards to deliver. Uh, next, continuous operation. So first step was achieve 24 hours continuous operation. Next up, we're, we're working towards 100 hours and beyond. And this is important so that we can understand how to operate the plant at steady state and move forward ultimately to a uh, com commercial reliability to support our larger scale projects. As part of this as well, we've got a specific uh, focus on demonstrating our solids handling equipment. Um, and, and what I'd say in this respect is, it's a little bit early to uh, claim success, but graphite handling on the back end, which is a bit of our more novel equipment, is functioning as expected and graphite's moving through the system. Um, so again, no major concerns there. Looking forward to reporting success in future uh, presentations there. Then lastly, scale up validation. So what does that mean? Um, a lot of our prior experience is at pilot plant scale, much smaller. The scale of the CDP uh, significantly de-risks scale up to the larger scale commercial units. And so uh, using this test, test kit to validate uh, methane conversion rates, hydrogen production, uh, and graphite production rates for the larger scale units is, is of critical importance. And that's, that's one of our key objectives here. And also demonstrating ability to achieve uh, target graphite purity at a reasonable catalyst con consumption. So then next up um, at this stage, I'd say we're on track. Early indications are positive. We need to move forward and work on continuous operation optimizing the process. But if, if we achieve these deliverables, we already have the commercial interest and we're putting ourselves in a, in a strong position to deliver on the, the project pipeline. So with that, I'll uh, hand over to Glenn to talk about the, the project pipeline. Brilliant, thanks, uh, Mark and Tim. And I, there was a, a bunch of questions that came through on the CDP um, prior to the call and we'll try and address some of those in the context of what, uh, what Tim mentioned on data and, um, and and IP. I just want to spend a little bit of time um, on our growth projects. As you know, uh, you know, we've been sort of running and, and building at the same time. Um, we, you know, we're, we're very um, privileged to have sort of three growth projects in our pipeline, three very material global uh, commercial projects that um, with high quality partners which I feel gives us a very first mover advantage in, in North America, Japan, and France. We're focused this year on accelerating these projects now with the CDP behind us and working towards consolidating the projects as well as the commercial terms around, around these uh, particular projects. 
in North America, uh, Canada in particular, we're partnered with Fortis. They're, they're like the origin energy of, of Canada. So they're a very large gas utility. Uh, we're working on a 25 times scale up of our CDP. The feed studies there are nearing completion. We'll have a full design package for a 2,500 ton per annum facility this year. And that is, in some respects, the blueprint for the future of what we're trying to achieve with the technology. And we can scale up using that basis of design for future facilities, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 tons per annum. A preferred site's been identified. We can't say too much about that yet, but it's an industrial site um, that will provide hydrogen into an industrial sector that is uh, quite high emitting carbon dioxide. Uh, concurrently, we're no negotiating the the project development agreement, which will pr principally provide the commercial terms for the project. And we're very focused on delivering that this year um, and targeting a development decision around the overall project um, during the year as well. In Japan, Chubu Electric, just to remind folks, uh, Chubu buys trades uh, about 10% of the global LNG market. So it's a very large Japanese uh, gas uh, and energy utility. Uh, in fact, they're one of Japan's largest gas and power utilities. Uh, a site has been identified on their own property in Nagoya around the LNG import uh, facility. Uh, early stage pre-feasibility studies uh, and the development plan is scheduled for the uh, for Q2 for a Q2 milestone um, this year before we go into a sort of a detailed feed and design stage. Uh, Chubu and Chioda are also very confident uh, of uh, strong support from the Japanese government, of course, being a large player um, and, you know, focused on decarbonisation in Japan was one of the really early markets to, to get out of the blocks in respect of uh, hydrogen and, and decarbonisation strategies. In France, we have teamed up uh, and joined forces with ONGI, a French multinational energy giant. Uh, they supply, I think, energy or power to to over 45 countries worldwide. They're a leader in low carbon distributed energy um, infrastructure. One of the real highlights of this project is that during the early feasibility stage, it was identified that hydrogen produced from ASA technology meets EU taxonomy and low carbon thresholds. Uh, so it's a real gate opener for us in Europe for future collaboration projects uh, with ONGI and with other partners. So it's a it's a really important tick in the box um, in in Europe. The base design here is uh, for initial plant up to ten thousand tons per annum um, for industrial purposes. A preferred site again has been earmarked on the existing LNG import facility in the Montois region, um, and in in close collaboration with ONGI, we've been preparing a joint proposal for a significant low emissions hydrogen project that's targeting heavy industry in Europe. So it's a it's a a potentially game-changing project for Hazer and the technology. At this point, I'd also just want to reiterate uh, that Hazer is a licensing model, a licensing business model. So we're not taking project level capex exposure, which is one of our real advantages of our business model, and that gives us access to early free cash flow as these license agreements um, are put in place. Now, behind these projects um, is is some exciting opportunities. Um, it's worth mentioning uh, we've got a, our customer interest has multiplied substantially since our CDP has been operational. Um, I can't really mention names at this stage, but I, I'll kind of cluster them into sort of three or four main groups. There's the energy, oil and gas majors and super majors that are really looking for decarbonizing, especially their downstream and their refining assets, which of course uses the incumbent technology of steam methane reforming, which is a high um, CO2 emitting technology. Uh, there's gas and power utilities similar to Chubu Electric and Onji across Asia as well as Europe. Another sector is the global steelmaking sector, um, Asia in particular, as most folks probably appreciate that steelmaking emits about eight to 10% of global CO2 emissions. So it's, a, it's low hanging fruit for Hazer, and it's a sector that we're very focused on being a part of uh, going forward as we develop the technology and the scale up. And then there's other groups around strategic licensing partners and other um, parties that are interested in not just the technology, but also what we offer in terms of decarbonisation. But we've got 
something in the order of 20 to 25 active discussions that are going on at the moment. And I'm very confident uh, that we're going to build on our three commercial projects uh, into the portfolio this year. Okay, so let's just turn to the capital raising. Uh, last week, uh, we successfully completed a $9 million placement. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank all of the investors and shareholders that participated in the round. It was very strongly supported by our top five, as well as existing shareholders, several new domestic and institutional, international institutional um, and professional investors. We are attracting a lot, a lot more institutional interest now. I was on the road in Sydney, uh, Melbourne and Brisbane a couple of weeks ago, as, as many of you uh, know. And whilst some of them are not ready to jump in yet, um, this Hazer is consistently standing out as a as a as a very unique clean hydrogen climate technology investment opportunity. And that's a consistent feedback across many of the funds that we talk to, not just domestically, but also internationally. And I think that's a real um, credit to the technology and what we're trying to do. But we are very differentiated. And that's, again, consistent feedback in particular around cost relative to the incumbent technology of steam methane reforming, and also very differentiated on cost relative to um, electrolyzers and green hydrogen. The deal um, we think was attractively priced at an issue uh, price of 50 cents per share, together with a free attaching option with a strike price of 75 cents um, on a one for four basis. Uh, the option will be quoted or is quoted on the ASX and it's freely tradable. Uh, the offer pricing there is in front of you. It was a 10% discount to the, the last close at the time on a five-day VWAP basis, and it was a 20% discount on a 30-day VWAP uh, basis at the time. And it's worth mentioning, I think, just after we brought the CDP online that our recent high was around 70 to 72 cents per share. Uh, now, importantly, respecting our larger shareholder base, in particular our retail supporters, which we're very grateful for, um, we will be conducting a share purchase plan or an SPP, which is currently open at the moment. Uh, the SPP is seeking to raise about $4 million. It's open and offered to eligible shareholders, irrespective of your size of shareholding that you have in the company. It's an opportunity to purchase up to $30,000 of new shares. And that'll be on the same terms of the placement without incurring, of course, brokerage or commission fees. Um, and if you also participate, you'll uh, get the benefit of having that free attaching option, which again is quoted and freely tradable. This is a really important juncture for Hazer. Um, the technology is now de-risked for the fifth time. We're very well advanced. Our CDP is online. And as Tim and Mark mentioned, we're making really good progress with the technology and the, and the objectives of our test program. Uh, this raise was contemplated to prepare us for the next phase of growth, focusing on commercialization. It was always, you know, we've been working on a very robust funding strategy for the company over the course of the last 18 months, linked partly to the CDP. We think it's a very good time to invest. It's a high growth opportunity with on an attractive valuation. Uh, myself and the board participated in the placement. I had a, we had a few questions come through um, earlier in the week in respect of uh, my own and, and as well as the board's participation. I think in aggregate, we have participated in this round in aggregate of over a half a million dollars. That's in addition to the 1.1 to 1.2 million dollars that the board and some of the senior management of the company um, invested during the rights issue of last year. If you haven't received the documents or an email from the register, please reach out to Atomic. Uh, the details are on our website. There's a, there's a link uh, on our front page so you can um, get the details and, and call them for the uh, for the documentation. A little bit about use of proceeds. Um, as I've said, we've got a very well thought through funding strategy that we continuously um, review. We're a pre-revenue company, so it's very important that we keep a robust um, and strongly funded platform to execute our strategy. And we're now moving to that next phase of growth. You can see there that we've now got a very strong funding position and an, and a, an extended runway. And we are very, we're fully funded actually through some very significant milestones in the company. The cash needs of our business are actually quite low. We can run this business as low as a million dollars a month. Um, our CDP is now fully constructed. It's operational. We have no debt on the company at all. And we've got full funding flexibility across all of our portfolio. 
We're a licensing model, as I reiterate. Uh, we're CapEx light. We don't take project level CapEx risk. Um, and we license our technology through to project developers and, and owners of ultimately the project plants. With the funds that we raised um, over the course of the last week or so, plus our last reported cash position of $10 million and other non-dilutionary sources of funds, which you saw trickle through this week with a, a further milestone um, unlocked from ARENA, the Australian Renewable Energy Agency, that's the government grant funding system. Uh, we've got a pot of a minimum of 20 to $25 million, and that's ex excluding the non-discretionary aspects that we've actually been quite successful with over the course of the last few years, R&D rebates. I think we received 10 million or nine to 10 million a couple of years ago, we received five or 6 million last year, and we'll be in a similar position to receive something like that this year, plus more arena funding and other grant funding, which we have got applications uh, for in at the moment. The net proceeds from the placement, you can see the use of proceeds there on the right, um, really to fund ongoing tech and development, especially as Tim mentioned, the commercial reactor scale up of our three projects and those beyond that, expedite those uh, commercial projects in Japan, in Canada, as well as in Europe, so secure new global projects, as well as license deals and other corporate and strategic purposes. The timeline, I won't um, spend too much time on this. We've highlighted in green there the, the closing date for the SPP. And again, if you haven't registered your email or you'd like to receive electronic copies, please reach out to Automic. But the closing date will be uh, Friday, the 15th of March, um, 2024. Right, so um, closing out, um, we've got a transformational year ahead. And we're at a really important juncture, as I've said. Our strategic priorities are clear and they're focused on delivering value for shareholders. And we've got some really significant milestones ahead. They're clustered into three groups. Firstly, commercializing the tech. We're very de-risk now. So delivering all of those milestones that Tim mentioned on our test program, uh, we've got a bunch of milestones that we'll try to update throughout the course of the coming months as we tick further boxes in respect of um, the, the validation of the technology for commercial deployment. Unlocking the value of our graphite could be a significant value kicker for us. The graphite market has gained a lot of momentum. Um, the dynamics are in our favor. Uh, we've got large volumes on the way from the commercial demonstration plant, and that will enable large scale testing with prospective customers that have already tested a lot of the product. Um, so we'll be working closely with them as well as Mitsui, our, our partner in uh, Japan to identify further market opportunities. Secondly, we'll continue to drive forward our projects in Canada with Fortis. There's a bunch of key milestones there around feed um, and the commercial arrangements. Similarly, in France and Japan, Japan, we've got our own set of commercial project milestones there, um, and we'll continue to drive those projects forward. And more excitingly, the pipeline, the growth and the monetization opportunities, and the key focus um, that we're placing on the importance of continuing to validate the technology, technology by bringing on board um, new commercial partners. Pretty much it. I think we, we can jump into q and I'd just like to reiterate the compelling investment thesis that we have as a company. Uh, this is a very advanced, uh, disruptive, low-cost, clean hydrogen technology with a very strong competitive advantage relative to the incumbent technology of steam methane reforming and relative to the competing technologies um, in our universe of methane pyrolysis as well as uh, electrolysis and green hydrogen. Our technology co-locates, you can see that on, on the artist impression to the right, um, that drives down the cost, you know, the, the cost uh, picture for us, and it accelerates the pathway to lower CO2 emissions for our customers. It's a CapEx light business model, unlocks early free cash flow as we move into the commercialization phase. We've partnered already with tier one partners. There's more in the pipeline, um, but these are supporting the sort of the technology and the validation of it and as an overall technology, and we're in the sweet spot of the energy transition and a rapidly growing market, which is growing at about 6% per annum. Christo, I think that's a good place to stop and um, address some of the Q&A. Great. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, we will now move to the Q&A session of the webinar. 
I'd like to remind you now that if you wish to ask a question, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can during the session. If we don't get to your question, please submit it to the email address included in the announcement and we will follow up um, where we can. Uh, okay, we'll start with some of the questions that have come in in advance. Um, the, we've had a number of questions come in about the graphite. Um, so there's a multi-part question. Um, can you go into detail please on the graphite produced the quality and whether it's meeting expectations. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, Chris, I'll hand that one over to Tim. There's been a bunch of questions on graphite pricing, markets, quality. Tim, do you want to try and address some of those? Yeah, I'll, ta yeah. I'll take a start, Glenn, and if there's anything you want to add, jump in after. So I guess initially uh, quality, we, we anticipate producing 90 to 95% pure graphite off the off the process unit directly uh initial indications are that we're, we're on track for that if anything i i anticipate as as we get larger that will get that will get better so nominally quality we don't have concerns at this point what we're looking to do is uh to demonstrate continuous stable operations and uh, validate consistency of that product quality uh, and then, of course, we need the larger volume samples to formalize product qualification. So that's the kind of quality and product qualification angle. In terms of demand, you know, when we're seeing Chinese export restrictions, critical mineral status, increase in electrification, we see a, a strong foundation for demand and also uh, potential increase in interest in, in developing new products and taking on new feedstocks with that backdrop of the Chinese restrictions and the electrification journey we're on. So we're in a good position there. In terms of specific applications that we're after, uh, we, we've done various bench scale proof of principle tests. So they're all in the kind of gram, kilogram type testing uh, range. What we're looking to do with the CDP is to move to the next phase of testing and finalize some of that product, those product application qualifications. Um, so the CDP enables that. So what we're talking about is uh, still open to anything from batteries, electrodes, uh, blending into concrete, asphalt, water purification, lubrication, thermal energy storage, and, and steel. Um, steel in itself is a is a very complex area, and we see a strong synergy for, I guess, the whole of Hazer technology integrating with steel, uh, and that's from use of hydrogen to potentially also use of of graphite in a range of applications, ranging from conventional blast furnace application where that may have an emission reduction if you have carbon capture or lowering of emissions due to improved reactivity versus uh, the current material, um, all the way through to uh, electric arc furnace, et cetera. So there's a, there's a, a large range of applications. Probably the, the key is uh, larger product sample and, move, and driving that qualification forward, uh, leveraging the CDP. Yeah, brilliant, Tim. And I'll just add, <clears throat> I, I don't think there's not necessarily a correlation with purity in the market for hazer graphite. As Tim said, it's a very unique product. Um, we're, we're getting some feedback um, from early testing of our product that actually there's really good synergies with steel making and even potentially lower purity. So it's a large market, as Tim said, um, and it's one that we're um, keen to understand a lot better. Um, and so high confidence um, markets are, you know, an area that we're really focused on and um, and the feedback so far has been pretty good. Tim, would you mind just um, picking up on the question around energy intensity of process and kind of relative to, um, I guess, competition here, um, as well as kind of SMR? Yeah, so I might, Glenn, I'll, I'll tackle the energy intensity and I might roll in the emissions intensity piece in, into that answer as well. So if you compare Hazer versus hydrogen production technology, the, the incumbent really is 
steam methane reforming. And then the headline potential application is, is green hydrogen via electrolysis. So if we, if we look at electrolysis to begin with, uh, that's 50 to 55 kilowatt hour per kilogram hydrogen uh, versus an energy value, high heating value of hydrogen of, of 40. So you've got to put more energy in than, than you get out to begin with, with electrolysis. Uh, conversely, uh, Hazer is uh, less than 10 kilowatt hour per kilogram hydrogen. So a, a fraction of the energy you you have available in the hydrogen at the end um, and, and much less than electrolysis. So we're in the order of five to seven times lower energy input than, than electrolysis. That gives us a big advantage on energy efficiency, uh, pricing, and indeed enables us to drastically reduce emissions today versus SMR without having to build full-scale renewable electricity to do it. Plugging into the grid, we will also reduce emissions versus the incumbent in, in SMR, steam methane reforming. So I think we're well positioned in between the high emissions steam methane reforming and the high cost uh, elect electrolysis. Then when you look deeper into the methane pyrolysis space, we're, again, we're well positioned. The, 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 uh, I guess the, the longest standing participant there is really monolith that does a thermal uh, plasma methane pyrolysis and they have commercial units operating. Now, what, what we would say is that our advantage there is they're using a, a process that we're not sure is scalable beyond their current 5,000 tonnes per annum plant. And what we bring is a fluid bed process, which is is proven to, to work at scale, widely deployed in industry. Um, so we have an advantage on scalability, uh, as well as a graphite pro co-product co uh, versus the, the competition often have an amorphous carbon black or uh, impurities due to their catalyst that may be, may be toxic or have other adverse side effects. So I think we're well positioned in the hydrogen space on emissions and costs, and, and we're in a good leading position in terms of having the CDP deployed in methane pyrolysis there as well. Yeah, very good, Tim. Um, and we have actually published in the past, recent past, uh, the cost position of our technology based in a number of different jurisdictions, the US, Europe, as well as Asia. Our cost, of course, in the US, cost of production is going to be extremely low because the feedstock cost of gas is uh, around $2 to $2.50 a gigajoule. So we can be producing hydrogen in the US for you know, anywhere between a dollar and two dollars a kilogram, which is actually the holy grail um, for hydrogen. In Asia, where gas prices can potentially be four or five times larger, we can still deliver hydrogen to a customer for between two dollars seventy uh, and three dollars fifty. So we're still very competitive versus um, steam methane reforming without the cost of their CO two abatement. It's very important to compare Hazer uh, against SMR plus their cost of carbon dioxide abatement or sequestration or storage. So it puts us in a very competitive position. Those numbers are available publicly um, in some of our um, previous announcements as well as uh, presentations. Tim, I'll give you a breath. Um, on There was a question around royalties. <clears throat> um, yeah, royalties, we model in our uh, quite sophisticated techno-economic model royalties between um, 3 and 5%. That's pretty typical of technology firms. Um, if you plug all that into a model, some of that pricing around graphite as well as hydrogen price decks, you get very attractive economics for project proponents as well as Hazer as a royalty receiver. Um, our numbers are at scale of a 50,000 tonne per annum plant throws off for Hazer anywhere between uh, 50 to $100 million per plant of NPV. At scale now, if you, I'll let you do the maths on that. What you know, the Hazer platform could be? Our vision as a company is to be ten plants in ten years. There's no real limiting factor to that. The market for hydrogen is very large. Incumbent technology currently uh, supplies a hundred million tons of hydrogen today into the market. Now that hundred million tons 
comes with almost a billion tonnes of CO2. And that's our disruption as a technology to replace a lot of that dirty SMR produced hydrogen with clean hydrogen that's produced from Hazer technology before we go into new markets. So that's the real value upside for, for that. The graphite, of course, is the real value kicker um, behind that, that as well. Other questions on biogas and 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 uh, that, of course, yeah, we're using biogas at the CDP from Watercorp, and that was part of the arena, uh, the grant that we received. And we've got a very good, strong partnership and relationship with Watercorp, um, and we've been working with them now for a number of years. But the technology is agnostic to gas, as long as it's got predominantly methane in it, and natural gas is up to 90, 95% methane, LNG the same. Biogas is a little bit less, but we need to pre-treat that. But any source of gas that's got predominantly methane, that's Hazer's low-hanging fruit. And, and our ability to really accelerate the transition from using natural gas into clean hydrogen. Um, yes, we demonstrate today at the CDP the use of biogas, and that's you know a pillar of the strategy, uh, future biogas facilities worldwide. But the bigger market, as I've referred to, is that 95 to 100 million tonnes today of steam methane reformed hydrogen that needs a solution and needs it now and that's what Hazer can can provide so is there anything else that's come through uh, uh, glenn sorry just on the on the biogas there was a, a related question about co2 being flared and i just wanted to clarify that there's co2 in the biogas feedstock that we we separate out so we're not producing CO2 emissions, that's, uh, you know, a cleanup of the feedstock. Uh, just wanted to clarify that one. Okay. Um, there's one here on the US. Um, what implications does Trump win? Does a Trump win ha on have impact on Hayes' commercial discussions in North America? Com North America is a key market, um, clearly. Uh, of course, it's governed by the uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, which is very attractive to um, you know the use of hydrogen technologies in that market. There's up to a three dollar a kilogram subsidy for technologies and the supply side, and that is a real attraction for us. Of course, being low on the cost curve, it's it's less important. But the ability to to work in that uh, model uh, under those conditions is going to be very attractive to us. You know, anyone's guess what happens uh, in the U.S., but, you know, our, I guess uh, we'd argue that, you know, the IRA is, is still the baseline for, for clean tech industry. Um, it's been very successful attracting capital into the U.S. Uh, we're very competitive on the cost side, and we think, you know, with or without the subsidies, we can still be there. Of course, you know, we'll take every support we can get, um, but our economics stand alone. Uh, with and without, but uh, you know it's it's something that we're keeping an eye on. But it's a very attractive market, and will continue to be so. Um, with low gas, lots of industry access to capital, um, and very willing um, counterparties. Glenn, we've uh, we've had a few questions on um, first revenue and um, outlook on dividends. Actually, yep. Um, well, first, couldn't come fast enough, to be honest. Um, we've got our CDP operating. Um, of course, we would love, we don't, the CDP is not developed and designed, of course, as a, as a commercial offtake project. Uh, that said, uh, we actually do have some interest in the CDP graphite as well as the hydrogen. There, there is a small domestic market um, emerging in, in Western Australia. There's actually quite a lot of interest in our CDP graphite. So, Look, I'd like to think that we can get some, uh, you know, early revenues through our, from our CDP. It won't be massively material, but I think importantly, it'll help validate, uh, you know, the hydrogen price as well as the graphite price worldwide. Um, so, you know, it's something that we're focused on. Of course, our commercial projects, we're working very hard to accelerate all of those uh, to get the revenue stream into the company. Um, and, you know, we're working alongside uh, you know, Fortis, and, and our Japanese partners, Chubu, as well as Onji in France on the commercial aspects of our technology. So they'll come through as soon as we've uh, completed negotiations around uh, the, the commercial arrangements. And then um, just on the... Yeah, go ahead. Just on the fundraising, um, just again on the timing now for the fundraising. 
Yep. Um, very. I, I think I addressed most of that in the presentation. Uh, why now? I, you know, we, we've always contemplated a capital raising post CDP. Um, we really want to set the company up with a very extended runway. Um, now that we've got the CDP operational and we've got a number of really material commercial projects and giving the company 12, 18 months to two years of a runway, we think is important. Uh, you know, we've got $10 million in cash last reported, plus our um, our raise, plus whatever comes through in the CDP and all of that non-dilutionary um, sources of funds that will come through. It does give us an extended runway and we're fully funded through some very significant milestones. And that's the importance of what we're trying to achieve with the technology and give this a runway to uh, let us exercise and execute some of that, those important commercial discussions that we've got. Thanks, Glenn. Um, we, we have covered a number of, of the categories of questions that have I'll just pick up in. on that one on the SPP, if you don't mind, Krista. Yeah. Um, the SPP is, is currently out there with a headline of $4 million. Our SPPs in the past have actually been very successful. Um, and, you know, the, we're very grateful to the retail and the investors that we've had supporting the company through the SPP. Um, and so I'd encourage you to have a look at the documentation. If you haven't, please reach out to the company or the uh, share register. But most of our SPPs have been very well subscribed. Um, to and um, you know we're hoping this time around that's going to be the same. Chris, I can't see any other questions there that um, in the list that we probably haven't addressed. There's a few there on the registry. Please reach out to Atomic um, Royalties. We talked about. I think that's probably a good place to wrap up. Great, Glenn. I will uh, let you say a few closing remarks, and following that, we'll close the webinar. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks, Krista. Uh, look, thanks, thanks again to everyone for joining the call. Thank you uh, also for supporting the company, uh, the existing as well as new shareholders, shareholders that have joined our journey. Um, I'll reiterate, we've got a very advanced, disruptive technology that's getting a, a huge amount of interest worldwide. We solve a massive problem for industry, um, replacing uh, steam methane reform technology. We plug in to any industrial infrastructure worldwide, be it a petrochemicals plant, a refinery, a uh, power generation site, we're capex light. So we are really moving away from having project level risk and giving us early access to free cash flow. Our technology partners and our project partners support the validation of the technology and will continue to fill the hopper up with opportunities. Um, and all in the backdrop of the uh, the sweet spot of the and the tailwinds of, of the energy transition. Um, as well as um, the uh, the hydrogen e economy. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, everyone. We'll be closing the webinar now. Uh, the company will be posting the recorded webinar on their website in the coming days. <laughs>